Well, hello there. New Melon Design here with a quick lighting setup uh, video. Today we are uh, working with this modern bungalow house. So let's go ahead into build mode. And I'm going to turn a couple of uh, materials, their emissiveness. So they behave like a light source. I'm going to bring up the emissiveness of this material on the light around the value of two and I have a couple of uh, spotlights in here so I'm going to bring emissiveness on those as well a little higher because these are small uh, light sources so in order to make them visible I'm going to uh, add more emissiveness to it and uh, let's go back to our photo mode I already preset the scene uh, today before here are all the effects that I'm using. I'm going to go through all of them uh, at the end. But first of all, I'm going to add a couple of uh, lights to our scene. So we'll go back to object mode and turning on the first layer of lights. It is this uh, spotlight in here. As you can see, I'm lighting up this uh, tree. Here is the shape of the of the light. It is a spotlight with a, with a very narrow uh, cone angle. Here is the the light. It is a daylight and the brightness value of the light. I use the the target tool in here to aim the light directly uh, at the tree. So when we go back to photo mode to preview the light, back to our scene. When I press F8 key on my keyboard. You can see the preview of the light in here with all the shadows as well. Moving on to another layer of lights. Now we have these spotlights above the porch. They're all the same value, so I'm going to select just the first one. It is a little different um, shape of the spotlight. The, the cone angle is a little, little wider than the previous spotlight. The temperature of the light is white or daylight, pretty much the same as the previous spotlight. Uh, the brightness value is slightly up and the cone angle pretty much the same as before. Now let's go back to our photo mode to preview the light. I'm going to press F8 key again and here you can see the effect. There is a couple of uh, shadows in here, so they are disappearing. Uh, especially uh, under these uh, the chairs on on those uh, sofa on the porch. When I press F8, you can see or preview the light with shadows as well. Going back to build mode, turning on another layer of lights. Here we have this main light on the porch. As you can see, it, there is a uh, five uh, lights on this specific light i'll explain why here is the cone angle it is a very wide angle to cover as much uh, of the area as possible now i used five of the same uh, cone light or the same light the reason being this center one the one in the center is pointing down but if i only use one i would have very strong shadows uh, on the, on these walls and the pillars around the porch so to make the light a little more even or spread, I added a four more of the same light and I uh, angled them towards each respective wall or, um, or direction. So uh, the light is spreading evenly in all directions and it is lighting up basically the whole porch. So when we go back to, uh, to photo mode, to our scene setup, and I press F8 once again, now you can see uh, the effect of this light. There are all the shadows in there under the chairs and the table and the light is spread more evenly. If I only had the one in the center, here would be the shadow as you can see in here, the, the bottom one. It is a little brighter. So let's go back to our build mode for our last layer of lights. And that's basically the lights from the interior. You can see there is a lot of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them because they are covered in a separate tutorial for the interior of this house. So let's just go back to photo mode to have a look 
on those when I press F8 once again here you can see the shadows coming through the louvers on those uh, living room windows and also the light coming through the open door uh, towards the porch also from the kitchen heading out so that's the, all the lights now let's go quickly through um, our effects that we use uh, today lens flare obviously is for all these uh, lights or light sources so uh, it creates a little bit of a halo around the light source so when I bring the master brightness up and isolate the bright pixels you can see uh, how the, the brightness is uh, is increasing so let's find uh, the right value for the for the lights I think somewhere around here looks appropriate next uh, effect we're using real skies as you can see in here uh, here is the preset from Illumion using overcast one of the overcast presets uh, <coughs> from Illumion I uh, lowered the brightness of uh, of the sky so we're losing a little bit of light as you can see this should be the uh, original value of one well, we're bringing it down just a little bit and I'm bringing the overall brightness up so I get uh, I get a little more light on on the exterior around the house especially in here in the backyard next up we have precipitation as you can see uh, it, the, the surface is wet in here so I'm using the the rain uh, effect in here so the slider is all the way down and the precipitation phase is somewhere uh, around here so it's basically after a heavy rain and we got a couple of um, dry spots already uh, appearing in our grass uh, I removed all the particles quantity and particles size so basically it is it looks like after rain and there is no more rain in uh, in the air so that's precipitation fog that comes with them um, with the overcast preset we forgot a little bit of the the background and the lower portion of uh, of the clouds so here is the the preset density uh, fall off basically it's not uh, um, reaching too high into the sky and the fog, fog uh, brightness next up a sky and clouds as you can see it's automatically disabled in Illumion when you use uh, real skies uh, same goes with the Sun when I turn it off or on it does not make any difference so we are only using a light coming from the real skies uh, sharpening tool just increase the intensity a little bit uh, exposure we're bringing the exposure up slightly from uh, from the original value to give uh, a little bit more a light into our scene uh, color correction here we have the temperature is going a little down as you can see our scene is um, it is a diffuse light uh, it is an overcast scene so uh, uh, the color should be towards the blue uh, spectrum so uh, call the colors as you can see in here uh, the brightness goes up but the contrast goes uh, down we have overcast so a lot of diffuse light that means uh, no sharp shadows from the skies or from uh, from the natural light that's why the contrast goes down next stop uh, reflection now we have one important reflection uh, to select in here and that is this uh, surface as you can see in here all these tiles uh, in the backyard because we are using the precipitation and we have uh, we have one more yeah it, it is a kind of out of focus later on I'll show you but we have a little lake or pond in here so um, we're selecting that one as well but that one will not be too visible because we're gonna blur it out anyway but this surface in here is because we are using the precipitation phase and it is wet we'll have a lot of reflections uh, realistic reflections uh, from these surfaces you'll see later after the final render that's why we selected it in in our reflection uh, panels and obviously not to forget the speedway reflections to turn them on next up uh, hyperlight we keep in the value uh, from the preset because that is uh, mostly for the interiors uh, skylight that one we adjusted a little bit we brought the brightness up slightly to uh, to get a little bit of bounce from uh, these surfaces around the house on the back of the house so that is the light bouncing from the skies and uh, the surfaces around the house and we bring in the saturation down since we have um, overcast uh, 
uh, seen in here, the weather. So the colors are not going to be very, very vibrant and strong. So we're bringing the saturation down just a little bit. Next up, shadows. Once again, the coloring of the shadows goes towards the, the blue spectrum, so cold shadows. So we're bringing it up here. Uh, the same goes for the interior exterior slider. It goes towards the exterior. And the omni shadow goes a little up as well. So we get uh, a little bit of detail in the darker area of the house. Turning on the soft shadows and fine detail shadows on as well, because we have a diffuse light in here. Done with the shadows, chromatic aberrations. I always like to bring it down just a little bit from the preset. And the last stop is depth of field. Now uh, we're using this uh, autofocus feature. As you can see, I selected the middle of the house. Confirm, turn it on. It will measure the distance, the focusing distance from the lens. Uh, I brought up the amount of blur, almost towards the half uh, value and the foreground background slider towards the background. That means the background will be out of focus more than the foreground is. It is only slightly out of focus, as you can see, only this uh, part of the grass that is not important, but starting the, the table in here and the main portion of, of the house in here will be sharp and in focus. So that's all the effects. We have all the lights. I think we can proceed towards our final uh, render. And as I mentioned before, interior of this house will be on a Red House uh, design channel and the landscape uh, tutorial will be on SRP landscape design channel. Both of the links are in the description of this video. And for now, thanks for watching, stay well and stay creative.